Well, math is necessary for a very high percentage of contemporary occupations. In fact, even working in a modern factory to have any kind of responsible job, you need to have math through at least one year and preferably two years of high school algebra that you've mastered, not ju that you just got a C or a D in the course, but that you actually understand it because it's used for all kinds of tasks. Even forklift operators have to understand fractions and proportions and ratios. So that uh, they really, to have a, uh, a wide range of jobs in a modern economy, you have to have at least reasonable proficiency in math. We did the study because when I was on the National Mathematics Advisory Panel, which was between 2006 and 2008, we, everyone agreed that fractions were absolutely crucial to later learning of mathematics, but they, there was no evidence really tying the two together. And so a bunch of people said, we really need evidence showing that early understanding of fractions is needed for later understanding of more advanced mathematics. And given that no one had done the study and the opportunity arose to work with Greg Duncan and Pam Davis Keene and others who had access and expertise in dealing with large longitudinal data sets, uh, we seized the opportunity. The basic finding, uh, there were two, one of which we were hypothesizing was the main reason we ran the study, namely that early understanding of fractions, that is understanding in fifth grade, was predictive of long-term learning of both algebra and overall math achievement test scores, even when you statistically controlled for the children's family background, their ed parents' education and income, their children's verbal and nonverbal IQ, their reading level, their working memory, uh, and their knowledge of whole number mathematics. The other finding we didn't expect, which was that knowledge of whole number division was also predictive when all of those other skills and fractions were both statistically controlled. One thing that clearly is needed is that the teachers have deeper understanding of what the fractions mean and of why the fraction arithmetic procedures are legitimate things to do. There have been several studies that have been conducted comparing U.S. teachers and East Asian teachers in China and Japan. And what all of the studies that I've seen show, the message is always the same, when asked a question like, why is it a legitimate thing to do to invert and multiply in order to divide fractions? Or why is it that adding and subtracting fractions requires a common denominator, but multiplying and dividing them doesn't? East Asian teachers can generally give two or three different reasons why those procedures are legitimate and why they work the way they do. It's a rare U.S. teacher who can even give one reason why the arithmetic procedures work that way. So if you don't know why they work that way, all that the teachers can do is just say, do it, because it's the right way to do it. And unfortunately, children and adults for that matter have a lot of trouble remembering rote information that they don't understand. And so this leads not only to the children not understanding what fractions are or what the arithmetic procedures with fractions mean, but they also don't even remember the procedures once they have stopped studying them even briefly. Well, the next steps are, first of all, to better understand why children have such difficulty understanding fractions and why adults, for that matter, have such difficulty understanding them. And the other clear need is to develop better means of teaching them, uh, that is, teaching students to learn the math, and to teach teachers to have a better understanding of the concepts and principles underlying fractions so that they'll be able to pass that on to their students.